This is How to Drink, and I'm Greg, your host. Uh, this is the show about making cocktails and how to drink them. And I have a word for you. Rosebud. 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 This is How to Drink, the show about making cocktails and how to drink them. I'm Greg, and I have never been a professional bartender. I've never even had a job in a bar. I don't worry too much about precision and technique, because at the end of the day, if the drink you like is in the glass, you did it right. Let's get going. Of course, I'm talking about the 1941 film Citizen Kane. When Orson Welles directed Citizen Kane, he's only 25 years old, uh, which makes me feel just fantastic about everything I've achieved in my life. Uh, what is this movie really about? This movie is a, uh, a huge movie that wa uh, was nominated for nine Academy Awards, was hated by uh, everybody. Whenever it was announced, apparently, at the Academy Awards as a nominee, there was enormous booing. It was a bomb despite all the hype around it, it, it totally tanked at the box office. And why is that? Well, Kane, the character of the film, probably, almost, no, Kane is definitely based on William Randolph Hearst, who is a huge newspaper magnate, right? He is basically the guy who invents yellow journalism and throws us into the Spanish-American War for fun. Uh, I mean for money, which is all kinds of fun. I don't know how to run a newspaper, Mr. Fetch. I just try everything I can think of. Charge, you know perfectly well there's not the slightest proof that this armada's off the Jersey Hello, coast. Hello, Mr. Bernstein. And so this is a movie kind of about him and his life, but also his long uh, love affair with Marion Davies. Marion Davies was an actress in The Silence and The Early Talkies. Very interesting relationship. She was a lot younger than him. He was much older. She really had a knack for comedic timing and probably should have had a more comedic kind of career. He wanted to see her, uh, we're talking about William Randolph Hearst now, doing much more dramatic roles, which she was terrible at, and I think ultimately that probably killed her career. Orson Welles actually knew both William Randolph Hearst and Marion Davies and came to really regret his portrayal of her in the film. I don't know the character's name off the top of my head, but it's not Marion Davies. They gave her a different name. I digress. William Randolph Hearst really is Citizen Kane. Rosebud, uh, what is the movie about? What is Rosebud in the film? I'm not going to tell you because that really would ruin the movie. It would be a stupid thing to tell you. I will tell you what it was in real life. In real life, Rosebud was, uh, at least according to um, Gore Vidal, who knows a thing or two about a thing or two, he, Rosebud was probably Hearst's pet name for a part of Marion Davies' anatomy. And we'll leave it there. Uh, and so he didn't like the movie, he bought up all the copies, he tried to frame uh, Orson Welles. He had him branded as a communist, even though he wasn't. Uh, he did everything he could to sabotage this movie. And instead, what we have is a movie that uh, Roger Ebert referred to as the default answer for greatest movie of all time. Is it really the greatest movie of all time? I don't think so. Is it a cool movie? Yes, I do think so. I think that it makes use as an editor. Um, some of you have been playing the home game, you might know that that's what I do for a living. There are some crazy things he does in the edit. And so in some degree, some ways, uh, I do think this movie gets, uh, deserves a lot of the hype. It also has a, a real serious cultural significance. That, let's stop talking, let's just make a cocktail. This drink is called the Rosebud. I was looking, I was just doing some cursory research online looking for ideas to build a cocktail for Citizen Kane and I came across something on the uh, Tales of the Cocktail blog. It is credited to Tales of the Cocktail staff I don't know who actually invented this drink. Uh, I apologize to the real inventor. Tales of the Cocktail has done you a disservice, unless it was somehow invented by the entire staff at once. I find that hard to believe. Uh, so I would love to give you credit. Instead, I have to point people in the direction of the Tales of the Cocktail blog for the original. Um, I am going to improvise. I, I, that drink calls for fashionola. I'm going to, I don't have that on hand. I'm going to make use of the base fruit juices that go into a fashionola. Fashionola is sort of a quasi-lost tiki ingredient that we're going to talk about in a Chaser episode down the road, actually. Stop talking, Ga Greg. Make me a damn drink. Okay, let's do that. Let's make this drink. We're going to start by cutting up a lime. Three quarters of an ounce lime juice in my tin. One quarter ounce of my gum syrup. Um, so this is passion fruit juice. We're going to use a quarter ounce of pop passion fruit juice. And a quarter ounce of, gu uh, of guava juice. Okay, that should be pretty good. I need three quarters of an ounce of Amaro Averna. This is an Italian aperitif for digestif. It's a bitter 
liqueur. Let's give it a, sh let's find out what it tastes like. I haven't drank too much of this. Mmm, it's uh, a little sweet, very kind of, um, mmm, mmm, ooh, it's got something going on there. I like that. It's got a little bit of a bitterness, a little, but it's not too bitter. It's, it's mostly, that's a nice. A quarter ounce of Ray and Nephew Overproof. Um, now, this, this is pretty neat stuff. This is a Jamaican rum that is 63, that's 100, and, this is 126 proof. Um, and what's fun about it is, you would think something that that's hot is mostly gonna be ethanol, but actually the Ray and Nephew Overproof um, has so much uh, funk in it and so much flavor that it is, um, it's a really uh, valuable ingredient in rum-based or, or tiki-based drinks. Not that this is tiki, but you know, you get the idea. This is not Everclear. It's not pure ethanol and water. This is, this is a really cool spirit. I want one ounce of Appleton Reserve 12 year. Uh, you can use another aged Jamaican rum here. Probably not gonna be able to substitute the overproof Ray and Nephew. Like a Bacardi overproof is not the same thing. I need three drops of rose water. Um, rose water is rose water. You know, I don't know that one brand is significantly better than the other. Um, I use these little glass stirring rods. Uh, a friend of the show and my personal friend gave me these. They were collected from uh, hotel bars around New York City in the 40s and 50s, as I understand it. This was given out, um, you know, this is how you stirred your drink. They were stolen in a lady's purse. Uh, they weren't supposed to go home with people, but they collected them as souvenirs. And if you were to look very closely, they have etched on them the names of the hotels and stuff like that. They're pretty cool. Um, I, just, I just like to have them. Uh, they're probably radioactive. I don't know, is that blue glass? I wonder about it, but whatever. One, two, three, they're handy for that kind of thing. And I need an egg white, and I think that that's about it for this drink. Trick to cracking an egg with a clean line all the way around, and a friend of mine who's another editor told me this was to use a flat surface. I always would crack them on the lip of something, and then I would crush egg shell into the egg. Look at that. Clean line, pretty clean. Cleaner than it would have been if I had crushed it into the side of my thing. All right, let's give this thing a dry shake. Okay. Turn this to the small tin. Woo! Put this little chilled coop here. Now, to garnish this drink, I think the only thing that would do are some of these dried edible rose buds. Um, we can buy, you can buy these on the internet. Um, they're edible, allegedly, let's find out. Oh, they're delicious. Maybe it's not advisable. They're so dry. Oh, okay. Woo! So, they're edible. I don't advise eating them. You could. I mean, maybe after a few of these. But let's just make this drink as pretty as we can. You know, three of those there. Maybe we'll do a, um, a bitter stripe on this. There we have a rosebud cocktail uh, in honor of Citizen Kane, arguably the greatest film of all time. Let's find out if it's any good, because this is the first I've had of it. Fantastic. That was great. Ooh. Oh, wow. You get the most interesting rose note. And not that you, rose isn't something I'm accustomed to eating or drinking. And what a surprise in this drink. It just, let's go back in there, man. Wow. Oh, that's lovely. 
What a lovely drink. That's a really fun drink. It's, it's actually much fresher than its outward appearance looks because it does have a kind of heavy look to it with the egg white and the dried roses as a garnish. But in truth, um, the fresh fruit juices really stand it up. It is just very present, very, very, um, I, I would say not fruit forward, but it's well balanced between fruit and spirit. Um, and just very, uh, very drinkable, very fresh, not too citrusy, um, not too sweet. The mellow rum really helps, and this puts a little hair on its chest, if I don't mind saying so. Uh, it's a good drink. I fully endorse this drink. Let's have another sip and see what else we get. Um, the last minute choice I made to garnish it with some Angostura bitters puts a really interesting nose on it that I like quite a bit. Oh my God, that's good. Hell yeah. What else can I say about this drink? Has a nose of rose, a nose of rose. It has a nose of rose. Moses supposes his roses or his toeses are roses, but Moses, he noses his toeses aren't roses. That's a different movie. It has a, n a rose nose to it. Boy, is that a stupid thing to say, but I don't know how else to say it. And uh, that is unique to me. You don't find a lot of cocktails that have bring rose as a flavor or an aromatic. And I think that that is a really cool thing about this drink. As a matter of fact, it m probably is worth noting that the Angostura bitters are kind of robbing you of the olfactory portion of that. That when you bring it to your nose, what you're smelling mostly is Angostura when I put it together this way. Try it without the Angostura. I think that the drink will be even rosier and probably um, more in its element that way. But that's what cocktails are about, man. Cocktails are all about experimenting and looking at the glass or the shaker and saying, you know, I think this needs a dash of this and finding out that it did or that it didn't. And today we found out maybe that it didn't. I'd leave it to you to tell me. Thanks for watching How to Drink, guys. And if you like the show, I hope you'll subscribe. If you want more, you can swing by my Instagram at How to Drink or my Twitter at How to Drink. Or uh, if you are interested in purchasing anything that we use on the show, uh, that'll be listed over at thisishowtodrink.com slash gear. Uh, sometimes I blog over there. I'm trying to get better about that. I have a Patreon that's up there right now. I hope you leave me a comment and tell me what you think of this drink. And if you make it, if you have the Fashionola, you could try it that way. Three quarters of an ounce Fashionola instead of what I did, which was a split of a quarter ounce of gum syrup, a quarter ounce of passion fruit, and a quarter ounce of, of uh, guava juice. Uh, anyway, I would love to hear your variations, your take on this, what you do with this. Guys, it's been a great episode. It's been a great week. I'm going to finish this drink off camera. Thank you so much. Marion Davies was in the Floradora Girl, and we made a cocktail uh, a year ago that was based on the Floradora. That's all.